Hey guys, today I am here to discuss the first two episodes of the new Dimension 20 season, Never After, which is of course the whole first season. Now obviously the first episode was kind of just more introduction, getting the characters to meet together and everything like that, so I wanted to combine episodes one and two because man oh man did a lot happen in episode two. So we obviously got a little bit of a taste of what the characters were going to be like from the trailer, but meeting them all was definitely so interesting. I love the like common thread that they all have of their cursed and they're running either from something or to something. I think it makes it very interesting that it's like all these characters who for the most part aside from like Red and Mother Goose are not connected and do not know each other at all. They all have a kind of common thing even if it's different in what exactly their curse is. I like the idea that these guys banded together because they can all relate to some way in that but then I also like the idea that because of that there's kind of these like alliances where you don't super know how much you can trust everyone obviously right like Puss in Boots and Pinocchio obviously have their schemes going on that they've been running. The prince obviously is his number one goal is obviously to turn back into a human so that's what he's gonna kind of put first above everything else and then Rosamond wants to find her true love and I just think it's very interesting the dynamics that it creates especially knowing that we got a hint in episode two that someone might know more than they are saying and I know that like they were kind of unsure if that was referring to what Puss in Boots was talking about when he revealed about the mirror to all of them or if it was something more but I'm kind of hoping it was something more because I feel like we've never gotten like a real like betrayal you know of like oh like we thought we could trust you we thought we knew everything about you and that you were on our side and you've been keeping this thing from us this whole time and that's not even to say like that like they just are bad the entire time but like if it turned out that like someone was working for that crazy goose that gave Mother Goose the book or something like that and then they flipped sides and then worked with the group like I just think it could lead to such interesting potential storyline so like the fact of like we're kind of watching everyone eyeing each other like that I think just makes it so much more interesting and cool. Like I said in episode two so much happened like I was watching the adventuring party after and the way they were even talking about like all the stuff that had happened like you had Nat King Cole who disappeared into the book and then the her Drossel Dimer I don't know how you say his name I just want to say Doofenshmirtz and I know that's not right but also disappeared into the book. We also had everything with the mirror that we learn. We've got more stuff with the book. And then the biggest thing for me, the thing that I was like, oh yeah, I'm all into this season, was the reveal of Cinderella and everything with the stepmother and all that. So I think it is so interesting. Like that is just how you do a horror story and make it your own. Like the idea of the stepmother eating the stepsisters is so horrifying and like nauseating but it's just it's even more so of like because she loved those girls right like she was not a good person to Cinderella at all and she wasn't great to the girls either but like she loved them and she wanted them to go off and get married and she wanted the best for them so then to change it so now like she literally ate them so she could get more powerful and like sucked out the like like the way they were describing it I was like please stop and it's just like that's horrifying that's horrifying and like Cinderella coming back and confronting the fairy godmother and throwing her glass slipper as a sphere and the sphere still being in the fairy godmother like the description of the fairy godmother like when they showed her picture like literally wanted to throw up I was like she looks like a reanimated corpse like oh my gosh it's so scary and I just love the twist of like obviously like you've got these villains that we know right like the stepmother obviously a villain but then to think of like a twisted version of the fairy godmother is so interesting it kind of reminds me of when like people make the theory that like Glinda isn't really like a good person <laughs> like she let a house like fall on a person and then was like here take these shoes knowing that like the wicked witch would track Dorothy down like I just love when you take these ideas of things and like twist our perception of them so like obviously like from our point of view and from what we know of Cinderella, like the fairy godmother came, she saved Cinderella, it was awesome, it was all good. But like from the mice's point of view, it was horrifying. They got turned into humans, they didn't know what was happening, they didn't ask for it to happen, and like they're terrified of like anything she does because she's so obsessed with this idea of like letting 
young girls get their happy ever after that like she just turns anything into anything and the fact that it now whatever happened to the world that twisted it and made it more dark has affected her so now she like can't control it like she's like out of control with turning things in she doesn't have full control over her magic Cinderella having to confront her I think Cinderella having to confront her is such a more interesting storyline than Cinderella confronting the stepmother because obviously you would expect Cinderella to stand up to the stepmother but to have to confront someone who helped you and helped you get like a life that for all intents and purposes like Cinderella seemed to like right like to find that is just that's horrifying and the fact that Brennan was able to come up with that horrifies me but also like has me so intrigued because I think the fight with the fairy godmother next episode is going to be so interesting I mean he flat out said like if this was a fair fight like you'd be dead like they'll all be dead and like she's at half her magic like she isn't even at her full magic because she's still bleeding and they've got the spear and all that in her and it's just like it's gonna be so creepy and I'm so excited even if I'm nervous because they are all level one and that's concerning because the last time they were all level one was the fantasy high cafeteria fight and two of them died and three of them were rolling death saves. Fig got herself up but like was unconscious for practically the whole fight so I'm very very excited to see how like distraction and extraction are gonna work and I'm just excited to see what they have to bring to a fight because I'm also very nervous but what I will say I'm very excited for is Rosamond as a ranger. I really love rangers as a class and I think they're underused or like I just haven't seen them a lot unfortunately. Like the last one I could think of in Fantasy High is Antiope Jones was a ranger and I feel like we got to see a little bit but like the idea of like someone who like knows the force and like the force loves her and like they're able to just do all this stuff with like finding the safe pathways and you know difficult terrain isn't difficult like I just think it's gonna be perfect for the character and perfect for the setting and I'm excited to see her in battle. I'm excited to see all of them in battle. I'm worried but I'm excited to see all of them. I think Red is also one of my favorite characters so far like definitely a standout. I love anytime like Emily and Murph sit next to each other like anytime Emily and Murph have characters together I love how they interact like shout out to Harry Baby, right? But like, I just feel like they're just so fun. And it's just so fun to see them interact, especially now that they sit next to each other. Like, I love the scene when they were looking for wine and like Red was trying to help and she was just like right underneath him. And Murph was like, you gotta get down kid. Like you're right near me. Like it's just so funny to me. And I'm just so excited to see like her character, I think develop more because we know that she's got this kind of, I mean, she literally said in this episode, like, I'm a coward. I don't respect, like, I have, I don't value my own life or something like that. So, like, obviously we've got a lot to work on. I saw a Tumblr post that I really loved about Red, how it's affected her mentally, probably hearing her whole life about, like, these wolves that, like, eat people and then, like, take the shape of the person and, like, they can sound like your loved one, they can look like your loved one, but, like, they're not and you have to kill them. And then, like, read herself going through this and realizing that like no actually it's just like actually the person but like they're scared and they're angry because they don't know what's going on and like they just want their loved ones and realizing that like no they weren't monsters it was actually the people and the people were just killed because everyone in the town convinced themselves that it wasn't their loved ones like that's kind of a mental f you you know so like I feel like she's dealing with a whole lot of stuff right now including pink eye the poor thing so it'll be interesting to see her whole journey and I just hope she gets more not confidence but I guess just like respect for herself you know I feel like she's obviously young she's a teenage girl so like that's kind of a hard thing but I feel like I just hope that she can go through more of a journey and a change with everything and just be as awesome as I know she can be and I love how Emily plays her she's so hysterical and everything with the book gosh I don't know fairy tales that well like I know like some of them right like I know about Cinderella the like heel getting cut off and the toes getting cut off and I know like Snow White like the real one was like they made the evil stepmother like dance on hot pokers or something like that like I know they're all more twisted Little Mermaid like she turned into sea foam and died but I'm just excited to see how exactly Brennan incorporates these into this world because we've already seen him kind of like twist certain things like how Pinocchio's stepmom is also Cinderella's stepmom and then also with the thing of Rosamond her sisters is that the other princesses so like Cinderella and then I don't know if it would be Snow White or who it would be exactly 
but I feel like that's connected because like they saw her with a glass spear and the only person we've known who had a glass spear was Cinderella so and it would also make sense of like this connection of like princesses or whatever but also like what's happened to Cinderella in this world you know like what has happened to people that were once rulers when we saw all these different kingdoms have fallen and like their rulers are in disarray on the run like where exactly is she she tried to kill mother goose kind of in the book like she didn't seem super happy so I don't know if she's actually like a good person <laughs> like I feel like it's just gonna be they're gonna try and flip so much so it's like the people that normally we trust and gravitate towards like the fairy godmother are gonna be these twisted versions of themselves where it's like they're they're kind of a more darker version of themselves right because the fairy godmother didn't really change like she the one we know does turn mice into humans and other things and stuff like that but it's like now this more like twisted convoluted version of her where she's kind of lost her way but I also like seeing things even without changing that because even without like her getting this more dark side to her like the mice were already affected by her turning them into humans so I like the idea of like oh this stuff that like we only see from the good point of view like it's messing up other people and I think that could make it really more interesting and then obviously I'm excited to see about the prince finding his wife if he does find her if she's even still alive like how that's gonna go because I think that whole curse is so interesting it's interesting that this is like the second time Murph has done a character that's transformed right because Kugrash was a man that got cursed to be a rat and now he's the prince who was cursed to be a frog and now that true love is waning and you know he's turning back into a frog it's really funny I love hearing them discuss it about how like you know relationships take work and like you never know like what exactly like you never you never know right like it's not like a known thing right away if like you're losing their love or whatever but just the fact of like if you did if it was like oh hey I'm going out tonight and then it was just like ribbit <laughs> like you know like you just could like figure it out right away I think it's so interesting and yeah like all the characters I love their versions of them I love Timothy Goose so much oh, broke my heart like everything with Jack that's the other thing about the book I'm like is this book good because it's like they're acting like it's good but I'm like his son isn't back like his son is just in this book now so I'm like is it gonna end with like everyone getting sucked into this book and like that's their new world and like the world that they have right now that's like dark and all that is going to be left behind because like I don't know if that necessarily sounds better right like it's not a real world it's just you're living in a book and you're living the same thing kind of over and over again which like yeah you're happy but it's not real life like Mother Goose doesn't have his son back like I said so I'm very curious about that stuff with the book and like obviously all the visions we got from everyone are so interesting even like Pinocchio's which was like a high roll and like seemed nice like he was like no that's not a good place so it's so interesting to me this book is it like just a neutral thing that like the wielder you know kind of decides where it's gonna go there's more books apparently in the world and I'm so interested to see who could potentially have those and just what other fairy tale things we're gonna see I'm hoping we get to see Belle and the Beast because I think that would be really cool and she's my favorite princess but even just like Hansel and Gretel would be cool to see like there's just different ones that already kind of have that like Ugh, you know to it where it's like Hansel and Gretel like their dad sucked their stepmother awful but it's like you know you could take that idea of like Hansel and Gretel who like didn't follow the rules and like ate too much and like what could you turn that into in a twisted version so I'm excited I'm scared of Brennan's mind but I'm excited to see what's gonna happen and yeah that fight next episode is gonna be Whew, it's gonna be batting down the hatches I can already tell so I'm so so excited and yeah please please leave any theories you have especially about the book because I'm so curious about that down below in the comments and let me know what you thought of all the characters on the episode so far thank you guys all so much for watching make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time bye